Hey, hey, hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm JP Knowledge, and I'm here to drop some knowledge on you about personal finance, savings, and how to maximize spend. If that's something that you're interested in, please hit the subscribe button down below. The topic for today is going to be Chase and different rules that you should know about Chase. So the first rule we're gonna start off with is 524. 524 rule is a rule where you can only get five car credit cards within the course of 24 months. So these can be any credit cards, but after you get five, Chase will stop accepting you automatically. I'm pretty sure it's just an algorithm they have set up um, where if you end up getting, let's say, two Capital One cards, you end up getting two American Express cards, and then you try to apply for two Chase credit cards, you're only gonna be accepted for one and you're gonna get getting rejected for the other. So if you are someone who's looking to get credit cards, the reason why people will tell you that you should start with Chase first is because of that rule. Now product changes typically don't affect the 524 rule. So if you happen to decide that you wanna change from the Freedom Unlimited to the new Freedom Flex card, one trick you can do just to confirm to make sure that they don't end up doing a hard pull is you can call them and say, hey, I want to product change from this card to this card. Um, is it gonna end up being a soft pull to do that? And if the person on the phone says, yes, it is gonna end up being a soft pull, or for some reason they say, no, it's actually end up being a hard pull to do this, then don't do it. Now I know there's gonna be people out there being like, am I over 524? How do I know if I'm over 524? You can't just call them and go, hey, am I over 524? And talk to one of their customer service people on the phone. They're gonna pretend like they don't know what 524 is. So don't ask them that question. This is something just off of data points that if you look at Reddit feeds and all these other different things where people have collected this data and information about the different rules that they could, they realize from the algorithm that these companies have set up. So knowing that, um, the way you're gonna have to figure out if you're past 524 is you're gonna have to go either look in your history to figure out when you actually had all these cards set up, or what you can do is there are different things where you can check your credit report. So I use Capital One's CreditWise, and on there it shows me one it shows me different credit cards that I have opened, and from there I can see okay now I have these cards opened. I'm going to be at this 524 at this time, or I got this card before this, and it kind of helps you out to actually see where you're at. I think Credit Karma also has it on there. You can always do your the research on your own cards, see exactly when you got them, go back to the first statement, go back to seeing exactly when it is, but check it out just so you don't end up putting yourself in a position where you end up uh, getting that rejection when you try to apply to the card. Now, another rule that Chase has is they have a rule where when it comes to their Sapphire cards, so whether it be the Sapphire Preferred or Sapphire Reserved, you can only have one of those cards. And there's a very similar rule with the Southwest cards. You can only get one Southwest credit card. So just think about this when you're actually applying for them. If you are someone who's looking to get a Sapphire card, you know, think about which one you actually want to get. And if you are someone who's looking to get one of these Southwest cards, just make sure to choose the one that you actually think you want because you can't get both of them. So another rule that Chase has is a 230 rule, which is that you can't get two credit cards within 30 days. Um, this usually doesn't affect me. I guess maybe there's a number of people out there who are trying to get as many credit cards as quickly as I can. Typically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to hit those sign up bonuses. So usually I'll get the card, I'll wait about three months and I'll get the next card. I think that it's better always to wait just to be on the safe side. So if you are someone who is looking to try to get something like, you know, the Chase Sapphire Prefer and you have to spend multiple thousands of dollars to actually hit that sign up bonus, to also get yourself the Hyatt card and have to worry about trying to hit the multiple thousands of dollars with that sign up bonus as well. Because we're all about trying to save money here. We're not trying to spend uh, more than we need to. So unless I guess you can spend 10,000, uh, which is what it's coming up to, then do that. But for me, I think the best way to go about it is just try to hit up that sign up bonus, wait a little bit of time, give it two, probably three months to actually end up getting the card and then get the next card. The next rule that Chase has is their limit rule, their credit limit rule. Now, this isn't a hard rule, is where they only want to have 50% available credit for what you put down as your annual income. So if you put down that you make $80,000 a year and you end up having $40,000 a year available credit, that's something that they actually, they don't want you to go over that number. Because if you end up going over that number, there's a possibility they end up like closing down accounts. So a good thing, a good trick to do is to actually ask for a credit uh, decrease. So if you have a credit line decrease, it's going to give you more available available credit, if that makes any sense, where the next time you apply, there's gonna be more space for you to actually get the card. I know that Hyatt, they gave me 
a lot. It was like ten thousand dollars somewhere near there. Where I don't think I'm ever going to spend that amount of money at a a Hyatt. At least at one time like this. I have so many other credit cards that I'm never going to hit that number with Hyatt. So for me, I just decided to ask them for a credit decrease so that I could get other cards. But that's something that you should think about doing. And I know there are people out there who were like, "Oh, well, I want. I love having." hundred thousand dollars in available credit or I love having this these big numbers and it doesn't mean anything okay because we should always have the credit that or the money that we end up owing being at zero so if we have a hundred thousand dollars for available credit what's the point of it other than to just try to flex to people saying that you have a hundred thousand dollars of available credit this next rule that I have that Chase has and then pretty much goes with all the other credit card issuers is the rule where if you're spending in weird habits that don't reflect what you actually said for the amount of money that you make per year, they actually might end up shutting down your account. So say for instance, you say that you make $80,000 a year and you end up getting yourself the Sapphire card and somehow over the course of the year, you spend $200,000 and you pay it all off. That right there gives Chase red flags. They wanna know how you end up getting all that money. They they start to think things are gonna end up being shady. So I'm not saying that it's guaranteed that your account's gonna get shut down if you do that, but there's a possibility that Chase might just cut out all you know connections with you because they don't know what you're up to. If you're someone who ends up saying that you're making a certain amount of money, you should be having spending habits that reflect you making that amount of money. And the last rule to know when applying towards Chase or actually having a Chase credit card would be to make sure that you're not trying to cheat the system when it comes to actually getting the Chase credit cards. There can be certain links or certain things like that that can allow you to somehow bypass 524. There's all these other little things I don't even want to even get into because I don't even want to even put them into your head. Um, but if you end up doing these things, there's a possibility that Chase will just shut down all of your accounts. Best thing you can do is figure out what the rules are and stay within those rules and maximize your gains within those rules. So hopefully these rules helped you out. Um, those are the major ones that you need to know for when applying for a credit card and for when next you have the credit card things to take into consideration with Chase. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment down below, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and have a beautiful rest of the day. Peace.